Hi, I'm Joe James. Welcome to part four of my series on quadratic equations. In this video, we're going to learn two special cases for quadratic equations. One, where there is no b term or x term in the equation. And two, where there is no constant or c term in the equation. Our first special case is b equals zero, which means there's no x term. You can see there's an x squared term here and a constant. So a is one, c is negative 36, but there is no b because b equals zero. So the x term does not show up in this equation. So how do we solve a quadratic equation where there is no b term? Well, that's very easy. So these special cases are pretty easy to solve. All we need to do here is add 36 to both sides. In other words, we're moving that constant, the c term, to the right side of the equation. And we'll rewrite this as 36s cancel each other out. We get x squared equals 36. Now we just take the square root of both of these. The square root of x squared is x. And the square root of 36, well, it's 6, but it can also be negative 6. Why? Because negative 6 squared also equals 36. So 6 squared equals 36 and negative 6 squared equals 36. So we need to have both the positive and negative case when we do a square root. We take the square root of x squared, we get x equals plus or minus 6. In other words, there's two solutions here. So the solution set is negative 6 comma positive 6. Let's try another one with a no b, no b term. We see there's there's no x term here because b is 0. So again, we're just going to add the 75 to both sides to cancel out this negative 75. In other words, move it to the right. So plus 75 on both sides. And we get 3x squared on the left. Now, what's slightly different from the first problem is now we have this a to contend with. So we can't just take the square root of x yet. First, we have to divide out that 3. So we'll divide by 3 to get rid of this a. We divide by 3, that cancels. We divide this by 3. Now we're going to get x squared equals, let's see, 75 divided by 3, 25. So x squared equals 25. And then when we take the square root of both sides, again, we have a positive and a negative case. So x can equal positive or negative 5. So there are two solutions for x. So we could write our solution set like this, negative 5 comma 5. So our set of solutions for this equation. Let's look at another one where there's no x term. So b is equal to 0 here again. We have a, an a term or a 5x squared and we have a c term, a constant, but there is no x term. So again, we'll do the same thing. We'll add 80 to both sides to get rid of the constant. We'll move it to the right. We'll rewrite the equation, and we see that these cancel out. We get 5x squared equals 80. And then we're going to divide both sides by 5 to get rid of this coefficient of x squared here. So divide by 5. And we get x squared equals 16 when we divide that out. Next, we take the square root of both sides. We get x equals, there's a positive and negative case, so it can equal either the positive or negative 4. And if we write that in set notation, we would write like this, negative 4 comma positive 4. Now in special case number two, there is no c term. In other words, there's no constant. You see we have an x squared term here and an x term, but there's no constant. So the constant is zero. Well, that's great. So let's see, how do we solve this? Well, we're going to solve this by factoring out an x, something we did in the previous video. So we can see that we could divide an x out of both of these terms and rewrite this as x times, well, what do we get when we divide an x out of x squared? 
we'll just get x. And then when we divide an x out of 8x, we divide that by x, the x's cancel out, we just get 8 equals 0. So that is factoring out an x, right? And if we wanted to test, we could say x times x equals x squared, and x times 8 equals 8x. So we, we can see that these two are equivalent ways of writing the same thing. This is just with the factored out x. Now when we have it written in this form, we can use the zero product property, and we can say, well, x equals zero, and x plus eight equals zero. And then we subtract eight from both sides, and we get x equals negative eight. So there are two solutions here, x equals zero, because if this is zero, then this whole left side is zero, isn't it? And the equation is true. So we find two solutions. Uh, we could write it in set notation as negative 8, comma, 0 is our solution set. Let's try one more like that. So here we have no constant. We have an x squared term and an x term. And the first thing we want to do is see what we can factor out of this. So let's see. I'm going to put something in parentheses equals 0. And let's see, what can we factor out? Well, we can factor a 3 out, right? We can put a 3 over here. But they also both have an x that we could factor out. So we'll factor out the x as well. So when we divide a 3x out of this, well, all we get left is just an x. And then when we factor a 3x out of this, all we get is plus 3. That's all that's left. So we can quickly test this. 3x times x is 3x squared. Okay. And then 3x times 3 is 9x. So we apply the distributive property to our factored version here and see if we get what we started with. And we, we do indeed. So now we can apply the zero product property and solve for our two solutions of x. So let's see, we'll start by saying 3x equals 0. And here we divide by 3. Divide by 3. x equals 0 over 3 is 0, isn't it? And then we have x plus 3 equals 0. And we subtract 3 from both sides. So we get x equals negative 3. Now we have our two solutions, which we could write in set notation of negative 3, comma, 0 are our two solutions to this equation. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.